and your style is so unique. Thank and you. that kind of, I guess, here we are at the warehouse now yeah. in, in your shop. But when did you get into all that? Like, when did you develop a, a, a love and a passion for style? And when did it turn to vintage? Or was it vintage yeah. off the bat? No, that's a great question. So um, I started thrifting. Before, so I don't know if you know, thrifting got really popular, I would say, like, 2020. Like, right after COVID, everyone was thrifting. Like, But prior to that, like, I would go with Carrie and Corey, the two people here right now. We would go in, like, 2016. And I remember Carrie just started thrifting, like, 2015 prom shirts. Like, just random shirts. And he would wear them to football practice. And the coach was like, what the hell are you doing with a Hillsborough 2015 uh, <laughs> like, T-shirt? But that's, that's, what, that's what we were doing. And I would just... I would just thrift and thrift, and I, and I really enjoyed it. Like, I liked finding something cheap that I could wear that looked good, but it was never vintage. And then 2020, I, uh, so people, a lot of people don't know this. Before Grateful Grails, it was called Bad Kid Thrift. It was called that for, like, maybe, like, I would say eight months. And uh, it was just thrifting clothes. It was just, like, not really vintage, but, and I didn't have the knowledge that I did now. And that was, like, I think 2020. Shout out to Matt Helmstetter because he was there when I made the page. That's one of my best friends from growing up. But he literally saw me make the page, saw me go thrifting for like one of the first times for the page. So, and then I um, I started learning about vintage single stitch T-shirts. Like started like now you can throw a piece of clothing at me. I'll be able to tell you anything about it. But um, it started transitioning into vintage, and then the whole world was thrifting. I felt like in 2020, 2021, and then I just went all in on it, and I ended up like really getting my page together. And it actually links a lot with my running because unfortunately I've been battling like an injury with my running for the past year, year and a half. That is cardiovascular. So it's not a, which is a really tough injury to have because it's really easy to see when someone has like a torn ACL and they're in a boot and everyone can visually see that. But people see me going out and people see me doing all these things and they're probably like, oh, he looks fine. But every time I run, I'm in pain. So it was like, it was such a tough injury to deal with, and I'm still kind of dealing with it. And I went to like a million doctors. I went to uh, my sports doctor at school, which he's actually really good. But there was just really no alternative for me to get back to the athlete that I was. But uh, the opportunity that it gave me to work on my clothes was huge because Grateful Grails would not be able to do this now without me getting hurt. So that's why I always said, like, take advantage of every opportunity. I'm actually grateful ironically that uh <laughs> that uh what do you call it that everything happened the way it did like I wouldn't go back and switch anything and I'm just happy I got hurt two years ago versus when I was in high school because I would have gone crazy I didn't have this outlet and this outlet literally saved me I would say with like my mental clarity and really like brought me into a whole new world where I'm like and I love growing my business and it's just like one of I would recommend anybody like and I told my brother and sister this, if you don't know what you want to do, find a passion and start a business with it because you're investing in yourself. You know, like you, you are the business. Like you, you're not alive, the business dies. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Same thing with you, with the, with the bar, with the podcast, with everything you're doing. You are the business. Yep. It's red. You know yep. what I'm saying? So I just enjoyed working on this because it helped me work so much on myself and everything I want to do in life. So, yeah, so that's, it all started just thrifting in 2016 and then, progressively getting back into it, getting hurt, and then going straight in on a whole vintage business. So It's, it's crazy how when something happens, you can it's, – it's tough to see what positive might come from it. But then when that positive thing comes, and you might not even realize it in the moment, but when you look back, you kind of find out how crazy it is. Like you got injured, and you're like, damn, like this is – you were running. That was your thing. Yeah. And then – that is what ends up getting you to where you are now. Now you have this whole shop. You have, you're selling yeah. all these clothes. It's your business that you created. And it was all a byproduct of getting injured. You needed something else to do. And that's where your passion for style kind of came out. Yeah. And because I always loved style. I love dressing up. And, uh, like, I always had, I would say, like, if I had a catalog of my styles throughout the years, it definitely has changed a lot. And, um, but I would say, re like, recently I've been really challenging myself to really break, like, the, like, we talked about society before, like, kind of, fuck any societal norm. I like going at it, you know? Like, someone would say, like, because I've done modeling and other things and styling like that, and there's supposed to be, like, a motto that you stick with depending on a shoot or depending on where you go. Like, people are like, oh, you can't wear a leather jacket to Parker House. Well, I'd be like, well, I don't care what they say. I'm wearing a leather jacket to wherever the hell I want to go because that's me, you know what I'm yep. saying? So I always, like, break in the... Um, 
the, the social norm around the place. And people always ask me, like, yo, can I wear this to Air Show with this? I said, you wear whatever you want. And if you need help with an outfit, I could definitely help you. So 100%. Yeah. Style by Grateful Grass, yeah. dude. That's it's just it's classic. But, yeah. yo, that is such an important point. And it, it truly, I, I question why in today's day and age, anybody questions going against societal norms because there's so many different people out there that are proven to be successful by going against it. Yeah. And I was, I made a, I said a quote, I forget who. Uh, well, not a quote, because I kind of came up with it. And I was like, if you think about society, it was created by a group of people who don't even like us. That's yeah. what society is. You know what I'm saying? Like, go to your job, do what you're supposed to do, stay in line, don't cause any, like, I don't want to cause ruckus. You know, like, not organized ruckus, not Cesaro's <laughs> ruckus, but uh, <laughs> keep that in there. Keep that in there. <laughs> That's but, 100%. Yeah, because his ruckus is uh, it's, up it's here. Not another level. I want to cause ruckus in the sense of, like, I'm wearing an outfit that I absolutely love that turns ahead or people compliment on. 